In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a basic teleop program for your robot. I'm just going to show some basic concepts of making ser motors and servos move with the use of a controller. Nothing too complicated. If you have not yet installed Android Studio, then go ahead and check out our last video on how to do so. And if you haven't done so already, then open up Android Studio and open up the FTC app that we installed last time. You'll notice that we have three folders. This first one is the code that's been released by FTC, then we have the for robotics code, and then we have the code that you'll be writing for your robot specifically. The way that FTC wants you to do it is they want you to actually add in all of your code into this folder of a whole bunch of stuff, but it can very easily get cluttered. What we offer instead is your own library folder where you can put in all of your own code and it doesn't get very cluttered at all. We can go ahead and take a look at my first op mode. And we notice that we have a very rough layout of what a program might look like for your robot. This has been designed so that way you can just write your own code for your own robot very simply and quickly. You will probably be writing multiple programs for your robot, and to do so you need to make separate files for each program. Each file should be given a name which is descriptive about what the program does. And for a teleop program, we might have something as simple as main teleop. In order to make another file, we can just simply copy this first one and just paste it into the same folder. So go ahead and right click on it and hit copy and then paste it back into the same folder. It's going to ask you a name, make sure it's something descriptive about what the program does. And then click OK. So now the first thing we may want to do is change this comment up the top just to describe what the program does. Once you've made a comment describing your program, then we can come to the next part. We can see at the top here there's an annotation called teleop and there is a name associated with this annotation. This has to do with registering your file when choosing an op mode. You may also be wondering, what is registering your program? Well, when you have the two phones connected together, and you want to choose an op mode for your robot to run, the driver station will ask the robot controller for a list of op modes to choose from. The robot controller will send back a list of all the files which have been registered, and then the drivers can select an op mode to use. If your file is not registered, then it will not be seen when you're trying to choose an op mode. So make sure that you register all files that you need to use for a competition. The way that FTC wants you to do it is they want you to come into this file here and they want you to add on your file to a long list of programs which can, which can again get very cluttered. Swerve has actually made it so that way you, don't, you no longer need to use that system and you can just have an annotation at the top of your file which takes care of that for you. And you have three annotations to choose from. You have teleop, autonomous, and disabled. You can choose to use any of those annotations for registering your program. Now that we have those things out of the way, we can finally start programming the robot. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to declare our motors. Just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be assuming that we have a robot with two drive motors and one arm servo. Obviously your robot is going to be different from what I'm programming, so just write your code accordingly for what your robot should be doing. I'm just going to first write the drive code and then I'll get into the servo. The first thing we have to do is we have to declare our motors and servos in this section here. And now we can see here that I've declared two motors. The format for doing so is you create a new object of type DC motor, and then give it a useful name so that we know what motor you're talking about, and then set it to null. We set it to null here because you can only initialize your motors and servos in the main method. But now that we've declared our motors, we can initialize them down here. And now we can see here that I've initialized both motors. The format for doing so is like this. You need to set each motor equal to the hardware map dot DC motor dot get and then put in the string the name of whatever the motors are called in the configuration of the robot controller app. If the names in the strings are not the same as the names in the robot controller app, then your robot is actually going to crash upon startup. So it is quite important that you make sure they're the same. So now we need to set the channel mode of the motors. This is basically just telling the motor controller if the motors are going to have encoders or not. And that is how you set the channel mode of the motors. I'm going to be assuming that we're not using encoders, but if you are using encoders, then you can change without to using. There's one last thing we need to do with the initialization of the motors. Right now, if we give both drive motors full power, then our robot will spin in a circle because the motors are backwards from each other. An easy way to fix this in the code is just to reverse one of the motors. So then we can see here, that is simply done with this line. Your robot may need to reverse the right motors, but that's going to depend on your physical robot. Now we've done all our initialization with the motors, we can finally use them. So scroll down past the wait for start and go into the main while loop. This loop will run for the duration of the game. 
Within the while loop, we have an if statement which updates the gamepad states. Once we do that, then we can actually use the current states of the gamepads. I'm just going to make my robot use tank drive, but you can use whatever drive system you want. And there we have our tank drive code. The motor objects just have a method, which is called set power, and that takes an input from negative 1 to 1. The joysticks of the gamepad actually give an output of negative 1 to 1 as well, so we can just simply pass in the joystick values. The gamepad objects just have a whole bunch of variables for all the buttons and joysticks on the gamepads. So now our robot will be able to drive around. What we need to do next is set it up so that way our robot can actually use the arm. So we'll scroll back up to the top and we will set up a servo to do that. Writing code for servos is very similar to writing code for motors. And the first thing we need to do is declare them. And now I've just declared one servo to control the arm on the robot. You can see that it's almost exactly the same as declaring the motors, except it's not using DC motor, instead servo. Then we need to initialize the servo down in the main method. And we can see the code for that is also very similar to the motors. We just set the servo equal to the hardware map dot servo, not DC motor, but servo dot get, and then pass in a string. This string should be the same string that is saved in the configuration file of the robot controller app. If not, then your robot will crash on startup. Now with the servos, we don't actually need to set the channel mode, and we also don't need to reverse the direction. However, we may still want to initialize them to a certain position before the match starts. You may want to do this because sometimes there are robots which require servos to be initialized to a certain position, so that way their robot can actually fit within the 18-inch sizing cube. So we can just initialize our servo to move to a certain position. Instead of just putting in magic numbers, I'm going to declare some variables up above. So now I've just made a couple variables which will be the default positions of my arm. These numbers are going to vary depending on your robot, or you may choose to use a completely different system. One thing to note though is that the variable type has to be a double. Then we can come back down, and before the wait for start we can move our servo to whatever position we want. And this is how you would set the position of a servo. The servo objects have a method called setPosition which takes an input from 0 to 1, which is different from the motors which take an input from negative 1 to 1. Make sure you note that difference whenever you're programming. So now our robot's ready to go for the match, and we can come down into the main while loop to write the code for the arm servo. So now we can see here that my servo will move depending on if the A or B button has been pressed on the second gamepad. Note that there are two gamepads, because there are two drivers which will operate the robot. The controls for your robot will depend on what your team wants to have. But that is actually it for this robot. We have a robot which can drive around with tank drive and move an arm around during the match. Hopefully this teaches you what you need to know in order to make a basic teleop program for your robot. In a later video, we'll be going over how to set up the hardware and run an op mode on the robot. But until then, I will see you guys later. Goodbye.